Hello, so today we are going to talk about plagiarism. What is plagiarism and how do we avoid it? And this is most relevant to you as teachers when you are dealing with students, when they turn in their reports, when they turn in their class assignments, when they turn in their you know lab uh, journals and so on. And it is also useful when you yourself are preparing to report your own research, there also this comes into play. So, why is it interesting? So, this here is a slide, is a figure that I have taken uh, from an article which came out in science some time back, the reference is shown at the bottom. And what they did was that there is this big repository of articles called archive, which is available online. So, they looked at articles in that repository and separated those articles by the countries of the authors. And then for each country, they identified how many authors were guilty of plagiarism. So, what you see is a geographic map of plagiarism here okay? and they have put this. So, there is a, a color scale here where dark is really low instance of plagiarism below 5 percent. This light red is really high plagiarism about 20 percent which you probably see somewhere here and you see somewhere here uh, and India is here. So, we are not at the bottom, we are not at the top, we are probably somewhere in between. Okay. So, plagiarism is an individual problem certainly, but when people start looking at data like this, then it becomes a collective problem, because then it is said well you know from India about 15 percent articles are plagiarized, does not matter whether you did it or not, you become part of that 15 percent. So, in some sense it becomes a shared responsibility that we have to look at. So, what is it? You know, so let me first ask you this question that 10 percent copying or 10 percent plagiarizing is okay because it is too small. Well, you know I read something which is an active voice, I change it to passive voice and then I reproduce it and then it is okay because it is different. right? And the answer is that they are both wrong. Any amount of uncredited copying, this is as per IEEE guidelines that any amount of copying without giving due credit to the source is considered plagiarism, does not matter whether it is 10 percent or 2 percent or whatever. And plagiarism is damaging, really damaging. So, I like this quote that I would like to share with you, where Samuel Johnson was given a manuscript for evaluation and in response to the manuscript he wrote, your work is both good and original. Unfortunately, the parts that are good are not original. And the parts that are original are not good. So, you know, you never ever want to get this response to a manuscript that you submit. You want to be known for doing good work and to reporting it in a way that gives credit to your work. So, which is the reason that we all need to kind of focus on how to avoid plagiarism. So, and you know, let me repeat one more time for emphasis that the amount does not matter, whether it is plagiarism or not. The only place the amount of copying may play a role is in deciding what the punishment would be. It is possible that if it is 2 percent, you may just have to retract or withdraw that one paper and then you are okay. If it is 20 percent, it is possible that the journal may blacklist you forever, you may never again submit a manuscript. Okay. So, please do keep this in mind, please convey this to your students, please reinforce it at every opportunity you get, because this is a serious problem. So, now the other question that I get asked often is, well can we give credit and then can we copy? So, what that means is that these two paragraphs have been taken word by word from this article that I was talking about in science magazine. Okay. So, people say well ok, so this is wrong taking these two paragraphs word by word from the article, this is plagiarism. But you know we have cited the source at the bottom and now we have put quotation marks around the text. So, one part is correct, any time you take a sentence, a paragraph, two paragraphs word by word from any source, you must put quotation marks. Quotation marks indicate that this is a word by word 
reproduction of what is in that journal or in that article. And yes, of course, you cite the source. Okay. So, this is okay, this is technically not wrong, but as much as possible, you should try to write things in your own words. Okay. So, how do you do that? Well, so you use quotation only in the following situation that when you plan to discuss the actual language of a text, when there is something in that language that you want to highlight, you use quotation or when you are discussing an author's position on a theory and again the wording of their core idea is very important. So, you keep that those words intact or when you risk losing the essence of the author's idea when you translate, then you keep the original word or you know the author is a well known authority in this area and you want to invoke that authority to emphasize your point. You know, so, Newton said that and then you quote something that Newton said because you know if Newton said it, it must be right. So, that is when you use quotation, but otherwise you try your best to either summarize what you have read or paraphrase what you have read. So, let us look at what those two things are. Here is an original statement, electronic simulations may increase student access to a lab experiment since they are not constrained to a specific time and place. You can rewrite it like this, since a student can use a simulation anytime and anywhere, the simulation can improve the student's access to experimentation. This is a paraphrase of this original statement, paraphrase meaning that you represent what is there in the original statement in your own words, completely in your own words, certainly better, probably even better than copying, but one step better is now to write a summary. Okay. So, let us recap, paraphrasing is writing the given text in your own words. What does it do? It captures the entire passage but re-expresses it in new language. Okay. So, you do not copy, you do not put things in quotes, you use your own language. And this your own language is the most important part of paraphrasing, which you have to remember. Okay. What does summary do? Summary on the other hand identifies the main ideas, gives only enough background that is needed, okay. nothing extra and then reports everything in your own words. So, let us look at an example, here is an original passage, so you can read this passage and then we give three examples here or rather we reproduce the content of this passage in three different ways. Now, one of these is a correct summary, one of these is a correct paraphrase and one of these is a plagiarized reproduction, which is not okay, ok. So, I think you should now give yourself 30 seconds to identify these things and then we can look at the, the solution of this. Uh, and I hope that most of you who are doing this exercise will be able to get the answers correctly. So, the answers are these, this is the plagiarized version. And a very easy way to identify that was that there is not even a reference here. See both of these have references and this does not. So, if you do not give a reference that is already a problem and then if you compare the language here to the language here, you find that this has a lot of similarity to this. So, this is plagiarized. This is a paraphrase because you have basically taken everything here and just stated that in your own language. This on the other hand takes the main idea of the paragraph, which is the main idea, students should just take just a few notes in direct quotation from the sources to help minimize the amount of quoted material in a research paper. That is the main idea, right? that only 10 percent should appear and what should you do? So, you take very little thing as quote. So, that is a valid summary. Okay. We will end with this. And you can use this to answer questions that are available online and you can use this to do some self-evaluation exercise. Thank you.